All right, uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about the windscreen I've got on my DR. Um, and somebody asked if I'd make a YouTube video showing up, vid YouTube video showing how to make it. So uh, this is my first how-to video. We'll see how this turns out. Um, so basically what I did was I took a piece of poster board and I laid it on the number plate of the bike. And I just started bending the center up and trying to get a shape that I liked. And I came up with kind of something like that. Um, I got the idea from a picture I saw of a KTM 450 that had a small windscreen similar to that. Initially, I was trying to make it round, but you can't mount a round windscreen on a number plate and actually have it stand up. That was my first template. You can see um, it's been well used, but initially I had the bottom rounded. Um, and after going through a handful of templates, I finally came to this one. And basically, I just leave the bottom straight, and if I have to trim it a little bit, I will, but most of the time, it fits pretty good like that. You can see uh, this one is a 12-inch template. You can make this as tall as you want to make it. Uh, you can go 17 inches if you want. I found 15 inches works best. Um, so that center line doesn't matter how tall it is. Basically, your bottom line, you want 9 and 1 8 inch from corner to corner. And I actually left the main measurements out, so I'm going to add those now. It's so basically uh, 3 and a quarter from the bottom center line to that first line. And then about 3 and 3 eighths from the next, from the first line to the second line. And then, then this part can be as tall as you want it. Um, so once you get your template made, the center lines are going to be 15 and a quarter across. So that section, that three and three eight section is going to be even. Those two lines are going to be parallel with the bottom. Uh, the angled lines on the sides don't matter. They can be as long as you want. These angles can change. The top width can change. I found that eight inches tends to, to be what I like and that seems to work the best. But you can play around with these angles and the height and change the angle of attack on the windscreen, uh, which I've done with all kinds of different angles. That's the one I'm actually riding now. I've been riding that for quite a while. Um, that was one I actually, uh, I was riding a trail. And I'll warn you now, with one that's 15 inches tall or taller, if you get into technical terrain and you're in an attack position, this thing can catch the bottom of your helmet. And that was happening with one I had on there. It kind of bothered me, so I took it off and chunked it. And then I'm coming back from North Carolina, I stopped at a Walmart and cut that out with a pocket knife and rode it home. So uh, it's really easy to do. Um, this one was bolted on the bike. You can see the holes, and I actually have holes in my number plate from where I bolted it. Uh, and then I got smart enough to put Velcro on there. This is all you need. Industrial strength, two-inch strips, uh, adhesive on one side. The last strips I put on there held for over a year. So solid as a rock. You don't have to worry about it. If you are worried about the adhesive, use some kind of spray on adhesive like that uh, to firm it up, but you really don't need it. Uh, to make the windscreen, buy a Sterilite garbage can like the one I showed in the picture. You really don't have to heat this to form it. Um, once you got your lines, you draw your lines out. When you draw your lines out, stop your center line about six inches short of the tip. And then when you draw these side lines, stop them about two inches short. And then your side lines, your angles, leave about a half inch gap in the middle um, so they don't come together. If they do, there's a chance it'll start to split on you and it fits the number plate better if you leave that gap in the middle. But basically all I do is start with the center line and I just start bending it and I'll bend it to a little crease. You don't have to fold it completely over. And you just keep working it down like that creasing the center line more at the top less toward the bottom and like I said stop about six inches short the sides the same way you just start your crease sharp at the top and then work your way down just creasing make sure you got good straight lines and you crease along those lines and then stop about two inches short both sides on the uh, angled lines down work, work down to about two inches short then on the wings, you fold them up on the sides. Good straight, solid creases. 
and then bring them into about a half inch from the center right there. And that's all you do to shape it. Um, it shapes real easy. Once you have those creases, it'll hold its shape. You can see it's still almost pretty flat. Um, so you really don't have to crease it that much. Just enough for it to hold its shape. Then you put your Velcro on there, clean it real good with alcohol or something, stick your Velcro on there, and mount it on the bike. You just center the uh, nose up, and the, the center will actually come farther out than the front of the number plate, just a little bit, and that's kind of what you want. So you line your corners up like that, corners up on the sides, mash it down, and it's there. And I've had this bike, this bike with this plate, in Wyoming up to 109 miles an hour on my GPS with uh, no movement at all, it's solid as a rock. So you can see the height of the windscreen is not going to keep wind out of your face. The purpose of this was to keep the wind blast off my chest. And the height uh, at 15 inches puts the wind right at my throat. So it's actually below my helmet and I ride with a dual sport helmet with a visor and I get very little helmet buffeting. It's basically just the same wind buffeting you would get without a windscreen. It's really just keeping the blast off your chest. You can see there's a gap right there. And that's kind of important to let the air flow through the windshield. If, it, if that gap's not there, it's going to create a suction around the windscreen and start to pull it back. Um, or actually, it might start to pull it forward. But the gap just kind of helps with the wind flow. And the Velcro is important because if you're up on the pegs and in an attack position and you hit technical stuff this thing is going to come up and hit the bottom of your helmet which can be aggravating so if you do go over the bars the velcro is just going to pull off and this thing's not going to damage your number plate or chop your head off in worst case scenario i guess so anyway that's how i did it and that's how i formed it what i've been playing around with is a different angle of attack and to get the thing off, all you gotta do is pull it off. It comes off easy when you pull it off, but it doesn't come off easy when you're riding. Actually, it's never come off at all when I was riding, so it's not really an issue. And I've been working with trying to change the angle of attack, and that one's too far forward. But, uh, you know, you guys play around with that if you want to and see if you can come up with a better angle, something that fits a little better. Um, to cut the plastic, I use trauma shears. It's just a plastic garbage can. These get through it just fine. And uh, the Velcro, and that's pretty much all you need. Um, I have a black one that I made for my DRZ. The number plate on the DRZ is exactly the same. Exactly the same shape, same form and everything. So it fits the same. Um, it looked better when I black, had black hand guards, but uh, we broke a hand guard on the CRF250, so we haven't put a hand guard and my black ones on there. Um, but like I said, off-road is really not a good idea because technical terrain is going to is gonna make that thing beat you to death. So anyway, that's how I did it. Um, give it a try. Hope it works for you. Good luck.